now we must have taken a dozen or more trips in this beautiful country. For this particular occasion, we just picked and chose certain parts that are hard desired to see again, or we have missed completely until now and decided to drive by the other ones. Not because we don't like them, but there's just too many to love. Anyway, I will point out places we have skipped now and sprinkle in some old photos to arouse your interest. If you start your journey from the west, the first big area is the Istrian Peninsula. This area alone deserves a few days. The distances are not big, but the sights are countless. One of our kind memories is from this area when we organized a long weekend for my father and his friends. We didn't take on hundreds of kilometers every day trying to win an iron butt challenge, but saw interesting things, traveled on nice roads, and had steak and ice cold beer in the evening. I certainly can't believe this was seven years ago, it feels like yesterday. The gate to this area from Rijeka is the Uchka tunnel, but you should go the other way, to be more precise, the upper way on the mild serpentine. In the meanwhile, you should visit the Vojak peak, the highest peak of Istria. Everyone disregards the signs on the road, but the quality of this stretch is a warning sign in itself. The whole peninsula is visible from up here, like a modern railroad table, just with less fake trees and plastic passengers. They have built so many motorways in the last years, it's embarrassing for many countries and these have the benefit of sucking up all the traffic, keeping the other roads fun for everyone else. So thank you. As long as we are here, I wanted to visit a small and used to be quiet village, the smallest here, called Ham. Sadly, the marketing of this place made it crowded and superficial, but probably this is the natural way of these things. Still, you can see here the Ham glagolitic wall writings on display. These were written in the formative period of glagolitic, the second half of the 12th century. And they are the one of the oldest examples of Croatian glagolitic literary culture in the Middle Ages. Get down, guy. 
we have fled the scene much earlier than we expected, this has changed a lot in the past decade. The weather started to look worrying, so we quickly checked the forecast which way we should continue our short journey on the peninsula. But if you are in Istria, you shouldn't cut your plans short. Instead, you should visit Pula and Porec for its Roman remains, the arena, the temple. If you fancy some light off-roading, you should pay a visit to the Kamenyak Peninsula for its beaches, clear sea and stylish bar. The road looks rough, but it's still rideable, even with a low sporty bike like ours, just be careful. Motovun and Riaka should be on your itinerary also for its charming old town. Vigrad, the dead town, and the Limsky Canal, the fjord like bay. And definitely, you should visit a vineyard and an olive garden to taste some extra virgin olive oil. The local olive gardens, as they say, provided the oil for the Roman Emperor's court. You will learn how you can taste the oil properly, which is just as pretentious as tasting wine, but less people know about it, so you can be the biggest douche at the party once again. Since we are here with a motorcycle, I have to mention the road by the sea on the eastern side. That's something special. The view and the bends are great, and if you are there's not much traffic, certainly don't come in the summer. It's a short but great experience. We circled around Rijeka once again. According to the news, the temperature back at home rose to an extreme high, close to 40 Celsius. At the Croatian beachfront it looked very differently, almost worrying. The coastal road, aptly named Jadranska Magistrala, is a long stretch between Rijeka and Dubrovnik. One time for our trip our goal was to ride every corner of it, stopping at some major attractions. Probably the best part to ride is between Shen and Starigrad, and at the southeastern end after Omish, where the villages are further apart. Around the bigger cities it's not much fun. Now we have decided to take a detour and check out this part of the Dinaric Alps. Bosnia and Herzegovina lies in these mountains and that's one of the best places to ride in Europe, period. Check out our video of that region, you won't be disappointed. The most famous pass of this region is going over the Velabit from the mainland to Karlovag, but I'm sure this part also would be much more fun than the slow and congested part of the Adranska, even in this rain. During the era of the two Germanies, the eastern half, the DDR, produced a few western movies based on Karl May's famous novels. Many scenes were shot on these parts. During the next few days we will visit some famous other places too, following the footsteps of Vinatu, the Apache chief, or as the locals call him, Gojko Mitic. He was the actor who originated from these parts and played this role a number of times.
Before ascending back to the sea, we stopped at the pass, at the so-called Gates to the Sea, which was sadly way too neglected. It's a shame since the view is well worth the visit. Shen, our destination for the day, was in arm's reach, bathing in the afternoon sun, free of any rain and hopefully full of cold local beer and fresh seafood. Based on the forts and the buildings, the city used to be a more important one, but now sadly it seems to be slowly sinking in decay on many parts. The food and the drinks were good, and the low season crowd was bearable. Next time, we are going to finally ride again on the Adranska Magistrala's best part, visit some more native Yugo-American historical places, and reach Split. <laughs>